Hey y'all, Melissa of Melly Sews and Blank Slate Patterns with you today. And today's project is this tiny little baby t-shirt. So I've got a link down in the description for you to go to a blog post and get all the details about getting this pattern. And then once you've got the pattern, you can meet me back here and we're going to talk about how to sew this adorable little shirt. pattern pieces cut out let's go over what you should have you should have a front and the front binding and both of the binding pieces are cut so that they stretch lengthwise and then you've got the back piece and the back binding piece and two sleeves that's it that's all we need for this the first step is going to be to put the bindings on so let me open up this front piece and then I'm going to take the binding and I'm going to fold it in half so that I know where the center of the binding is and the center front and I'm going to match those two together and then what I want to do is match the ends of the binding with the ends all the way up here of the neckline. And then I'm going to stretch the binding very slightly as I sew it in place. And in fact, I'm going to add a couple more pins. And the place where you want to stretch it the most is right here on the deepest part of the neckline curve. So that part can be stretched a little more. And then up on the straighter parts here where you're applying it, there's less stretch needed. Make sure you're stretching just the binding and not the actual shirt. And it may be easier for you to not add this many pins. Like it may be easier for you to stretch this on the machine instead of during the pinning process. Okay, so once I've got that binding on, I'm gonna do the same thing to the back of the shirt. And I'm going to stretch stitch this right along the edge there using a one half inch seam. Let me go ahead and I'll meet you at the machine to show you how to do this. Okay, place the fabric under the presser foot and then you just want to make sure you keep the binding flat stretching the binding where you need to but not stretching the shirt okay so now that we've got the binding sewn around that edge what we're going to do is we're going to press this seam up and usually I can just finger press and then roll the binding over and pin it in place again. And you want to make sure that you're maintaining the curve of the shoulder and of the neckline. Now we're going to be stitching this from the right side because we're going to want to make sure we're stitching right over the seam that we did previously. So after I kind of get it held in place, I do like to switch my pins to being on the right side. That way they're easier for me to pull out as I stitch on the machine. It helps to go ahead and grab your iron before you go stitch this and just press this to make sure you don't have any of these strange puckers like this coming up. Give it a good press, maybe even a little bit of spray starch to begin with, and that way it'll hold while you're stitching, and then that stitching will help prevent those puckers and anything from coming back later when the garment's finished. So I'm going to go ahead and press this, and then I'll meet you over at the sewing machine to show you how to stitch it. This time we want to use a medium width zigzag as well as a medium length. Okay, we want to center the seam in the center of the presser foot so that the zigzags land on both sides of that seam. Okay, now that we've sewn the binding in place, you can see here's how it looks. And on the back side, there's going to be a little extra edge of the binding. So what you can do there is trim it off. 
And just make sure that you're only trimming the binding and not cutting a hole in your shirt. Be really careful. Now if you want to live dangerously, you can make your binding about a quarter inch thinner than the pattern piece. But um, if you do that, just know that you may have some trouble folding it all the way around. So I usually prefer to go ahead and leave extra and then trim it off later instead of not having enough binding to fold around. So that's what it looks like on the back side when it's all trimmed off. It's a nice neat little binding that will keep flat now. So I'm going to do that on the other piece as well and then let's talk about how we're going to add the sleeves and finish this up. Okay, now that you've got the binding all trimmed, what you want to do is take the front piece and overlap the back piece on top of it and you want to match up these little notches that are markers on the pattern piece. So hopefully you cut those out, but match up the notches and then pin those in place and then just match raw edges of the rest of the armhole edge. And you'll see what we're doing is we're creating that envelope neckline that allows the neckline to stretch over the baby's head. Okay, once you've got that pinned in place, this is where you're going to want to go ahead and grab the sleeves. So I'm going to match the fold of the sleeve with that notch. And I want to open the sleeves right sides together and then now I'm pinning through all three layers. It's the sleeve and then the two layers of shirt. And I just want to pin that sleeve right into the armhole. Okay, then I'm just going to want to sew these two seams using a stretch stitch. I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera because there's nothing special about this seam other than you're using a stretch stitch. And if you're new to stretch stitching, I will link a video at the end of this video about different types of stretch stitches that you can use. So after you've sewn the sleeves in, you're going to fold the shirt right sides together and we want to match up that sleeve seam and then we're just going to match up that side seam as well and you're going to stitch right down this edge. Make sure that with the sleeves that you stitch and then pivot and then continue to go down so that you keep that little extra tab there that is needed for the hem when we turn that up in the next step. And you'll notice that I've pressed the seams towards the sleeve when I pin them. Okay, so I'll be stitching these two side seams and I'm going to head over to the machine to do that and then I'll meet you back at the camera to show you the final steps. So the last step here is going to be to hem this. So for that I like to press the side seam open and then on the bottom edge here I'm just going to fold up three quarters of an inch and pin that in place all the way around. And sometimes it's actually useful instead of pinning you can just go ahead and pin the side seams and then press the rest to hold it in place and then that way you have fewer pins to worry about. And then you also want to fold up half an inch with the seam open on the sleeves and this is that little extra like angled out tab piece on the bottom of the sleeve. You're just folding that part up. Okay, so we've got hems pinned and we're going to stitch around those and around the bottom and um, let me meet you over at the machine and I'll show you a trick for how I deal with these tiny little sleeves. Okay, here's my trick for hemming tiny things like sleeves. There's no way this sleeve would fit around the free arm of my machine. So what I do is I turn this the shirt right side out and then I put the presser foot inside the loop. So that way I'm still sewing around the sleeve and I don't have to worry about things getting behind it, but the presser foot is inside since it's a tiny circle. Okay, after we're finished hemming, here's what the t-shirt looks like. I've got those hem sleeves, 
hemmed bottom and the envelope opening which will allow it to stretch over a baby's head which is comparatively big to its tiny little neck. Mm -hmm.